Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. We're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. And as I have been doing in the past several uh, episodes, I'm going to be updating my current Highline CNC project. So I know every week I say that I'm hoping that next week it'll be done. And <laughs> the fall next week comes and I'm still not done yet. So, uh, but it's really, really close. I'm still waiting on a couple of other uh, parts to come in, but as you can see with the motors and all this wiring, I've been doing a lot of uh, electronics testing. So um, I know that uh, uh, a number of you have expressed interest in how I'm planning to control this. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you uh, specifically in detail what I've been working on the past couple of days. Okay, so in the last episode, I just kind of touched on how I was working on all the wiring for my uh, CNC control. And I gave just some basic details about the steppers and the power supplies and the breakout board. And one thing I had mentioned was that I was planning to use, it's a DB25 CNC shield, which is attached to an Arduino Uno. And what the plan was, uh, was to attach a, a parallel port cable to the breakout board, and then the other end would be plugged into uh, the shield. And then I could attach uh, a USB cable and then connect it to my laptop. That was the plan. And I was really um, optimistic that it would work. I couldn't see any obvious reasons why it wouldn't. So I went ahead and assembled uh, the shield, plugged everything in, and hooked up the wiring to the motors, fired up the power, and when I went to jog it, nothing happened. And I tried everything I could think of. And I talked to a lot of folks about what might be going wrong and why it might not be working because it didn't make sense. There were other guys who had used it and had had success, so I couldn't quite figure it out. Well, nothing I could do seemed to uh, get it to work. And what I came to conclude is that the way this shield has been pinned out, in other words, the assignment for the pins and how they are connected into the Arduino, doesn't match the pinout for my breakout board. Now normally that would just mean having to switch some wires around, but nothing I did seemed to make it work. So I just kind of got frustrated and I decided that what I was going to do was I was going to purchase a UC100 um, parallel adapter, USB parallel to USB adapter that I could plug in to the breakout board. And then I would just plug the USB into the laptop and that would allow me to communicate with the machine. Of course, to do that would require that I would have to buy a controlling software like uh, Mach 3 or um, Mach 4, UC CNC, there's a couple of them. But the problem is, is they're all fairly expensive and I was really kind of excited about the possibility of just using uh, free open source uh, Gerbil software to run this machine. Well, after uh, thinking about it for a while, I had this kind of an epiphany. I thought, why not just wire the stepper drivers directly into an Arduino? So in essence, I would be replacing the breakout board with the Arduino Uno. No shield, just wire it directly into it. Well, the only issue with that is, is there's obviously, as you can see, a lot of wires that will connect into the Arduino. So um, it's really not a practical way to do it. In order to, to actually do it in a way that's efficient and practical and functional is to use um, screw shields, which attach to the top and have um, kind of the same sort of um, terminals that you see on that breakout board. So the screw, the wires can be inserted in and then screwed down really tight. But before I go to the trouble to do that, I decided let's mock it up with a breakout board and see if it actually works. 
And so, as you can see here, I've run all these wires up through here. I've got a lot of wires in here that are disconnected. It's, it's definitely a messy, messy hodgepodge, but um, it was the, I, th I feel like it was the best way to kind of test out this idea to see if it would actually work. And to my shock and surprise, it works. <laughs> it absolutely works. In fact, as you can see, I've got four motors here. Now, Arduino and Gerbil only supports three motors or three axes. But what I've done is I've connected my two Y motors. They're hooked up to, each has its own driver, but the drivers are hooked up to the Y axis. So they um, are uh, synced and slaved together and it works. So here I've got universal G code center running and I've got a file that I can load in here and we'll see, I'll show you how this whole thing works. And it really is pretty amazing. So we just hit send. That's the x-axis, and then this is the z-axis. So, as far as I can tell, this whole um, uh, solution actually works with the Arduino and Gerbil. The one thing I still have to do is hook up my limit switches, which um, I'm not anticipating any issues there. I think it will work just fine, but... Um, I'll, uh, I'm just going to wait and do that when I get the screw shields probably next week and then I can uh, hook it all together. I can clean up all this wiring and then comes the real test and that will be to actually uh, put the router in and start cutting wood and see how this all functions. But I'm now more optimistic than I ever was before so um, it's, it's pretty cool I have to say. Okay, so I've had a number of inquiries about the total cost of building this machine and whether or not I uh, intend to offer plans for it. And as far as the cost is concerned, I definitely will total up the costs when I'm done and I'll probably do an episode um, where I'll talk a little bit more about what that total cost was. But you're gonna have to take it with a grain of salt because right now, with the political climate that we're in in this country, globally in fact, I can't really say for sure uh, what the cost of some of these components are going to be as time passes. And what I say it is now is not likely what it's going to be six months from now. Um, who knows where the price of these components are going to end up because, or where they're headed because they're all coming from China. The motors, the linear rails, the bearings and so many of the, the nuts and bolts and, and bits and pieces for it, all the electronics, everything, it all comes from China. And who knows where um, prices are gonna go with that. And I, I can't help but think that no matter what people say, the prices are gonna go up, they just always do. So what I quote a couple of weeks from now is probably not gonna be accurate six months from now. But um, I can at least kind of give you a ballpark figure and kind of an idea of what I spent. And then you can consider that if you decide you want to maybe um, take a shot at building one of these. And speaking of building one, I also will be offering, at least my plan is to offer a set of plans along with a detailed instruction guide, uh, fully illustrated, that you can follow to assemble the machine. I've also done some uh, additional video work, which might uh, help in that process as well. I'm just trying to decide whether or not to include the electronics because when it comes to CNC technology, there are so many different ways that you can control a machine like this and it really depends in the end on how you plan to use the machine and what uh, your particular workflow is gonna be and what you feel the most comfortable working with. So I may or may not, I haven't completely decided that this system that I'm working on right now with the Arduino works. 
I may include that as um, an option and show in detail how I set it up so that uh, you can consider uh, at least trying that because really, if that doesn't work for you, you can build from there with many of the components that you purchase uh, to, to run the system. So uh, that's kind of the plan with that. So uh, that's where things stand. And um, in the next episode, hopefully I'm even further along than this, maybe even starting to cut some wood. Because I tell you, I'd really like to get back into building some guitars. Uh, people are starting to ask. <laughs> what's going on with the uh, guitar building. So that's, that's coming, <laughs> trust me. I do uh, uh, intend to continue uploading at least once a week my uh, Quick Tips for Luthiers. Uh, I just put one up yesterday where I talked about different grades of sandpaper and what to be aware of to avoid potential problems when you're sanding uh, your, the finish of your guitar. So uh, you can always check those out as well. But uh, we will, be back at it here shortly, and I will see you uh, in the next Quick Tips and then in the next episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. So take care.